could do that, that would be really helpful. Yep. Um, Ruth Maguire. Thank you, Convener. Um, good morning, Ian. Thanks for, thanks for being with us. I'd like to ask you about fan representation and voice and then accessibility of matches. Um, gate receipts represent 43% of total football income in Scotland. My understanding is that's quite unusual amongst uh, UEFA and it's the highest. Yep. Um, the Scottish Football Alliance believes that supporters' voices and fan representation and decision-making doesn't reflect just how crucial supporters are to the survival of our game. Mm -hmm. Would the SFA be open to including a fan representative on the board? Fan representation is obviously important across the game. You know, fans want to be heard, fans should be heard at clubs. There are varying governance models within clubs. Some have got, some are fully supporter-owned and supporter-run. Some have got a hybrid model that's got a board and some supporter engagement and some aren't quite there yet. I mean, it's ultimately for a club... Um, so, yeah, let me be clear. I, I appreciate the different structures within the, cl the clubs in Scotland. I'm asking about the SFA board specifically. Would the SFA be open to having fan representation on the board? So our board structure at the moment is two representatives from the professional game, one from the non-professional game, three office bearers, and we've got two independent non-execs. So I would argue the independent non-execs are football supporters. They obviously have an involvement in football and an engagement with football and want to be part of the board structure. So I would argue we have... You know, an element of support and engagement on the board. OK. Um, further to that, the, the Scottish Football Alliance recommends that Scottish football season ticket holders be allowed to vote for the president of the SFA. And um, they argue, and forgive me, I'm going to quote them directly, they argue that this would replace antiquated and undemocratic process of procession to office and blazer procession with a fair voting structure. How would you respond to that? Uh, this is a suit jacket, not a blazer. <laughs> um, it's, the president is elected by the membership of the association and that, that, that feels like a fairly standard, fairly structured operational process that the members of an organisation mm. would then elect who the president and the vice president are. There are opportunities for fan-owned clubs to put forward a representative of their club for the position of president. That, that position can come yeah. from across the football family and can be can be um, uh, put forward by any of the membership. So it feels like, from a, from a structural perspective, the membership determining who the president and the vice president are feels like that makes sense. Do you think, I mean, in that slightly pejorative language, um, aside, and it's a, a very nice suit jacket, um, <laughs> Could you see the benefit, though, in opening it up? You know, when we think about trust and that value of supporters and trust in the SFA, that opening that up to making it more democratic could be beneficial for the game. There needs to be an understanding of football, though. You know, I think, I think that, that has to be the case, that anybody coming in as a president or the vice president of a football association would need to have some sort of understanding of football, and there's no better place for that to come from than from the membership. I mean, I we've got... That's, that's what, how democracy works. Everyone gets a vote and they decide who's going to represent them. I don't, there's not a test, you know. So I, I don't get the point. Uh, what, we're, what, what they're suggesting is that all season ticket holders can vote for the president. So I would assume, I don't know the, the details of how the, how the, you know, that would be, how those elections would be tabled, but presumably qualified in, individuals with experience would put themselves forward yeah. and then there would be some sort of voting, but voting process. I think, I think if, if you take a step back, my point is clubs have the opportunity to put forward whoever they want. So season ticket holders at a club could take that decision to put forward someone from their club. So they, they would be effectively having a say in that, rather than Scott. Because listen, trying to get Scottish football as a whole to agree on anything is a is no, a I impossible mean, we task. We manage we manage elections in other contexts. So I don't think it would be be beyond the the Scottish public to to vote for the for the president. But I hear what you're saying. But in principle, would you would you not be for more fan involvement? Fan involvement is key in football. Ab absolutely. You know, I, I was at a club that was very engaged with supporters. Football fans obviously want a voice. They want to be heard within their club structure. They want a voice in how their clubs run and, and, and the operation of that. We need to be careful as well because fans are very emotional. They're fanatics by definition and, you know, supporters make emotional decisions when running football clubs. But they need to have a voice. They need to be able to be heard and be understood and that, that's absolutely mm. right that they're given that opportunity. I wonder, I, I don't think it's necessarily that, that fans want to run the SFA. I think it's maybe yeah. that they want more accountability and they want a say in who that executive is. Mm. Could you see the benefit of that? I think I've set out the position, you know, 
clubs have the opportunity, fans have the opportunity through their clubs to put forward whoever they feel would make the most sense from a from a club perspective. Um, you know, we've got a structure that's voted on by the membership. It's been in place for a considerable time. OK, moving on. Um, given Viaplay's recent announcement that it's going to end its involvement in UK sport coverage in early 2024, yeah. how realistic is it to expect that the SFA will take the opportunity to make future TV coverage of the men's national team free to air? Well, the nuance to it is Viaplay are under contract with UEFA until 2028 for men's national team rights. That's not changed. We've not heard that that's, that that's not going to be the, 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 the broadcaster from that point. I understand that Viaplay are going through a process and are, and are potentially looking to offload some of their rights. I think I would frame the question differently. I don't think it's on the SFA to make sure that the games are free to air. I think it's on the free to air broadcasters to make sure the games are free to air. The, 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 the process is that anybody can bid for our national team rights. We don't control... Mm. We don't have any centralised through UEFA. It is open for anybody to come and bid for them. It, it, ultimately, it comes down to value. It comes down to finance. We receive money from a, from the UEFA centralised deal. We then use that money to go and do the good work that we do across the country. As long as those financial terms are met, anybody can show our games. I would love the games to be on free tier, but it ultimately comes down to the free tier broadcasters and can they commit the required finance. So okay. again, that's another conversation for the committee to say how do we make sure that that happens because yeah. it would be great for us, it would be great for the game. I suppose the first point I would make is it would be down to me how to frame questions and you can answer them <laughs> in whatever way, way you wish. Um, are there other, other revenues or uh, other avenues of revenue that the SFA could explore to make up that, that funding? We are constantly looking at avenues of a new additional revenue. I mean, ultimately, the vast majority of the income that we bring in goes back out either to the clubs or goes back out to do, uh, the, as I said, the, the excellent work that we do across the community as Scottish football, and that's as an association and that's also as clubs. We want to drive that as much as we can. We fully appreciate that You know, later on today we're going to have what's been widely regardless as the most difficult budget since devolution. There are going to be cuts included in that, but we should be talking about sport and the ability that sport has to go and transform lives and make a really significant mm -hmm. impact across the country. So anything that would diminish our ability to do that doesn't make sense from an association perspective. And we're absolutely you know, focused on driving additional revenue to make sure that we can go and continue to do the good work that we're doing. OK. And acknowledging that there, there are sort of wider things involved, what can the SFA do to help ensure that, that our... our team, you know, our national team sport is, is free to view. I suppose it's, it's about, you know, I can afford to go to football games. Not everyone can. You know, we talk about the benefits of sport. Everyone around this table absolutely understands the benefit of sports. And part of that is watching it and being part of it. You know, what, what can the SFA specifically do to, to help ensure that that's accessible and free to yeah. um, I suppose particularly young boys and girls that are wanting to watch their national team. We are engaging on a regular basis with, you know, particularly BBC. They've got the Scottish Cup rights at the moment. The Scottish Cup rights for future years will be will be going out for offers soon, and we're, we're engaging with them to make sure that they're across that and can can do as much as they can to make sure they secure as many of those games as possible. And the same from a UEFA perspective. The, the challenge is that the international rights, as with all 55 national associations under UEFA, are centralised through their process. And it's for BBC to have a conversation with UEFA about how that looks. We can be involved in those discussions, but ultimately, under the terms of the agreement, it will be UEFA that decide what that looks like. But again, as I said, it's for any free tier broadcaster to go and have a conversation with UEFA. And providing the value is right, there is no reason why the matches can't be in free tier going forward. 